These are the seven devastating mistakes that I've seen thousands of pre-meds make over the last seven years I've been helping pre-meds get into top medical schools. To avoid ever making these mistakes, I'll go over each of them and give you the resources that you need. Number one is misunderstanding holistic admissions. Holistic admissions means that every component of your medical school application matters. Many pre-meds interpret that as some things don't matter, and that is the wrong interpretation. If you have a 3.3 GPA and a 505 on the MCAT, holistic admissions has made it possible for your extracurriculars, your letters of recommendations, and your narrative to get you into a top medical school. Now that doesn't mean you should feel confident that your 3.3 GPA and 505 MCAT will get you into medical school. One in five of the thousands of pre-meds with those same stats get into a single med school. Contrast that with the thousands of pre-med students that have a 3.8 GPA and a 518 on the MCAT, five out of every six of those got into medical school. Just because medical schools practice holistic admissions does not mean that the value of your GPA and MCAT have changed. There will always be room for students with high GPAs and strong MCAT scores to become doctors. And for students like this, it is the exception to get rejected from medical school. For most of other pre-meds with low GPAs and low MCAT scores, it is the exception to get accepted. So the solution to avoid making this mistake is that before anything else, prioritize your GPA and your MCAT. If you can convince yourself that you can earn a strong GPA quarter after quarter without excessive studying, then you can loosen up that priority and start spending time elsewhere. But don't start prioritizing your extracurricular activities at the expense of your GPA. This is why learning how to study has such an exponential impact on your professional career. You'll get better grades, better scores in less time, allowing you to use that time to get leverage on the other parts of your application. Don't misunderstand holistic admissions. Your grades and your MCAT score still matter a ton. Mistake number two is neglecting your community. And I'm not talking about the local Rotary club or the food bank. I'm talking about the secondary questions that nearly every top medical school asks. One of Stanford's secondary prompts are how have you uniquely contributed to a community with which you identify? Mount Sinai asks you to explain how a particular community has influenced your desire to apply to medical school. And Duke asks you to discuss your experiences with disparities in healthcare in society. Now to be clear, communities or populations with disparities does not just mean people experiencing homelessness or refugee immigrants. There are many communities you could identify with. Everything from LGBTQ+, people with physical or mental disabilities, low SES neighborhoods with poor health literacy, and many more. For example, in this application cycle alone, our students have fought for communities like women's and reproductive health rights, mental health issues in elite athlete populations, and advocated for adolescents who struggle with obesity. Most medical schools have a mission built around serving their local underserved communities. What that means for you is that they're looking for people who have experience serving these communities. The prevailing theory is that people from these communities with these same identities are the most promising young doctors to train and eventually take care of these populations. So the solution here to avoid this mistake is to use our framework to figure out what you care about. This is the three P's, people, population, and problems. What types of people have motivated you to become a doctor? What populations or communities do you want to make a difference in? What problems exist in healthcare that you feel are unacceptable and must be addressed? And if you don't know, I encourage you to try them all. Volunteer in the soup kitchen. Spend some time in that medical clinic in Tijuana. Sign up for the Special Olympics Wheelchair Basketball League. Try them all and you'll quickly find out what problems, people, and population you really enjoy spending time in. And even if you find nothing, commit to your best guess. Oftentimes we get the order of passion and skill wrong. We believe that skill follows passion, but usually passion for something follows skill. It's the other way around. When you try something and eventually get good at it, you'll find that you'll end up liking it more than other things. Mistake number three, your application is a one hit wonder. Too many pre-meds have one thing that dominates their entire application and have let their GPA, clinical experience, research, letters of recommendation all become glaring red flags. 
These are the pre-meds that put all of their eggs into their research basket or all of their eggs into their political advocacy basket. Remember, you're applying to medical school and that requires a foundation of clinical experience, grades, and oftentimes research. In today's admissions environment, it's a little bit oxymoronic, but you have to be both well-rounded and exceptional at something. You don't have to be a master at everything. You should be well-rounded at everything and then have something that you stand out for. So the solution here is to start by building a well-rounded application. Do not let any parts of your application enter red flag territory. After you finish that phase one of application building, then move to phase two, the one or two things that you wanna stand out for. When you figured out what you really care about and what you really want to be known for, invest double, triple the time into making sure that you are world-class in that lane. The easiest way to describe this transition is phase one, focusing on breadth with a B and an R, and phase two, focusing on depth with a D. And truly the best way to understand what is well-rounded enough or what is standout enough is to look at real successful medical school applications. In the description box below, you'll find our application database. It's eight full medical school applications, students who have gotten into UCLA, UCSF, USC, UCSD, and everything they submitted from their extracurriculars to their personal statement. You'll even find my exact application that got me into UCLA. If you're looking to understand what top medical schools want, take a look at our application database. Mistake number four, having no four year plan. You must know what your timeline looks like. There really aren't many core milestones. They include when you're gonna apply to medical school, when you're gonna take the MCAT, and what you're doing during the major summer and winter breaks. When you put your timeline on actual paper, you'll see exactly how much time you have to build a competitive application. For pre-meds who aren't incoming freshmen and want to take no gap year, you realize just how little time you have. Here are the core two takeaways when making your own four-year plan. Takeaway number one, I highly recommend protecting full-time studying, that's eight to 12 weeks during a summer to prepare for your MCAT. In the most recent cohort of students, our company Pre-Med Catalyst supported during this application cycle, 40% of pre-meds were taking the MCAT sometime between January and May. And because they were studying for it during the school year, they were often overwhelmed and didn't perform as well as they'd like. In fact, a majority of them had to push their MCAT back a month or two than they originally had wanted. Many of them were forced to retake the exam because they didn't do as well as they'd like. And 20% of them had to take an entirely new gap year just because the MCAT did not go as planned. If you can help it, which you can if you're planning ahead, do not take the MCAT during the school year. Organize your schedule so that you can complete all the prerequisites and prepare for your MCAT full time during the summer. Takeaway number two, if you are adamant about having a no gap year timeline, please understand how perfect you must be. If you want to apply in three years, you're really looking at roughly 500 to 1000 extracurricular hours every single year. This amounts to 10 or 20 hours of research, clinical experience and volunteering every single week. And if you don't hit the ground running or your grades start to slip, the window gets tighter and tighter. Still, it is much better to know and see visually on a timeline than to be surprised when it's time to apply your junior year and your application is nowhere close to being ready. The solution here is to make a four-year plan. If you graduate in June of 2027 and want to start medical school in August of 2027, that's a no gap year timeline. You'll have to apply to medical school one year earlier in May or June of 2026. And that means by that time, you want to have an MCAT score. Because we recommend preparing for it in the summer, that means you're taking your MCAT sometime between August and September of 2025. Puzzle pieces really don't have much room to move. And if you'd like to make the entire process so much easier, I have created a plug and play template that's ready right now for you to use and finalize your four-year plan. It's ready to go in the description box below. And if you need more guidance, I've made two complete walkthroughs on how to make your four-year plan. Mistake number five, arguably the most common mistake, is to not take your pre-med journey seriously. 
Culturally, it can be uncool or try hard to take your pre-med journey seriously. If you're looking for research or clinical experiences and other students are giving you a little bit of pushback or haven't gone that far in their process, then it can feel like you're doing too much. Remember that doing the exact same mediocre thing leads to a mediocre result. And in medical school admissions, the average result is a rejection from 25 medical schools. So in order to not be one of 30,000 pre-meds who don't get in every single year, you have to do something different than 30,000 other pre-meds. And while it's really hard to go against the grain and do your own thing and try hard, it's also really hard to go through three to six years of being pre-med, apply to medical school, spend an entire year and thousands of dollars only to get in nowhere. And remember, just because you take your pre-med journey seriously does not mean you have to be a jerk about it. Together, let's culturally change the pejorative and the stigma and the mindset around trying hard in medical school admissions. You're not being a gunner, you're just taking it seriously. Mistake number six is not objectively assessing your application strength. Medical school admissions largely is not rocket science. A lot of the criteria are standardized and transparent. And there are many applications like the eight in our application database in the link in the description box below that show you exactly what it takes to get into UCSF or UCLA or UCI or UCSC. It should not be a secret how competitive your application is. You must know where your strengths lie so that you can double down and be known for that thing. You should also know where your weaknesses are so that they do not enter red flag territory and are the sole thing that gets your entire application removed. At Pre-Med Catalyst, for our mentees, we use a simple six lever framework. Levers are things that you can pull on to increase your chances of acceptance. Levers one and two are your GPA and MCAT. Lever three are your extracurricular activities. You can spend more time being the best at those activities or finding activities that are great fit for you and that will increase your chances. Lever four are your letters or recommendations. If you have strong advocates, that also increases your chances. Levers five and six are your school list and written application, which we can worry about when we get there. Most pre-meds don't really know how to grade their extracurricular activities. And so some of the easiest things to do is to assume that the more hours means the better the extracurricular. But remember, hours are just a proxy for impact. They're not exactly the same thing. For example, my 343 hours as a hospital volunteer were completely useless. Contrast this to the 100 hours I spent as the finance director for Vietnamese Community Health, having raised $12,000 to put on multiple community health fairs for the Vietnamese and Hispanic, those hours were far more significant. If you're ever confused, read successful applications. That will get you into the ballpark of what you need to accomplish. And finally, mistake number seven is following irrelevant advice from the internet. This advice isn't longitudinal nor contextual. The advice that you're getting from the internet is one time and it follows the bias or the perspective of that one person or that school's singular adcom policies. You are getting a narrow perspective of medical school admissions as a whole. And so the solution here is to broaden where you get information from. And more importantly, it's to choose high quality vetted pieces of information that are specific to your journey and are longitudinal, a place where you can get recurring advice from. So get information directly from the source, from admissions committee interviews, from your top medical schools, from the AAMC interviews and resources, talk to medical students and faculty members from your dream programs, and most importantly, get longitudinal mentorship from someone who has done what you want to do and has helped others just like you do it as well. That's the entire premise of our mentorship program, where we help you take control of your pre-med journey. You'll figure out your theme, avoid these seven key mistakes, and build your application with a support system always in your corner. If you're interested, there's more information in the link in the description box below. Those are the seven most common pre-med mistakes and how to avoid each one of them. If you found this video helpful, you'll love this video where we talk about seven rules that pre-med freshmen must follow to be successful. Thank you for watching.